tricky transition Tuesday mm -hmm. is we're not going to go too kind of advanced. We were, we were going to sort of demonstrate that whole thing that I posted on the story mm -hmm. um, that Betty and I did a while ago when I was feeling quite flexy. Not feeling <laughs> quite flexy today. But we will um, film that sequence and really break it down um, online in the next week or two, we'll upload mm -hmm. it. So if this is sort of something that you want to work out, we'll have a breakdown, we'll do a breakdown of um, full camel, mm -hmm. of how to warm up and how to get in that. Also king of pigeon, just sort of how to hold the foot and things like that. So we'll have little breakdown videos if they're things that you want to work on. Um, today, we're just working with really simple, well, simple, simple, simple with it's all relative. Simple. Yeah. yeah sort of simpler um, <laughs> transitions when you are in, you know, more advanced postures. So warming up to get into wheel, if you're not in wheel at the moment, um, or if you're in wheel and you struggle to sort of draw your chest forward or straighten your arms, or even just have the strength to hold for a period of time, we'll give you a few little techniques to create strength. Um, we'll also then just give you a few variations of uh, wheel and that's it. And then we'll film sort of yeah. um, forearm wheel, lifting one leg up at a time and have a warm up the body. But I really find wall walks really helpful mm -hmm. um, because it opens up your shoulders. But for those ones, a lot of people um, have got a flexibility in their lower back. Like I know I'm super flexible in my lower back, but I'm really not as flexible in my shoulders. So when I go into these kind of poses, I have to really warm up my upper body to not injure myself. Rach is sort of super open through the shoulders mm -hmm. and her upper back, and sometimes it's just a bone thing, um, often it's a bone thing, but then there's a certain amount that you can warm up to as well. So there's things yeah. that you can do with straps and towels, and we're gonna do a little shoulder opening thing. We're busy. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things that you can kind of do to open up the body, and short little five, 10 minute things that you can do every day. Yeah. Oh, I'll talk to you. So we're going to warm, warm up. up. We'll yeah. warm up to get into these wheel variations. So do it with us. Um, you don't need a lot of space. Grab your mat or grab somewhere that's not going to be slippery underneath you mm -hmm. because that's one really important thing you need sort of grippy foundation underneath your hands and feet when you're coming into wheel. Okay, so. Okay. I'll hand you over oh. to Rach. I feel like I remember this. <laughs> Uh, we'll start with some cat cow <laughs> So lower the belly, lift the chest, roll your shoulders back. Exhale, press into the hands, turn the shoulders, pull the ankle in. So this is also a really good way just to check in with how your spine's feeling. Yeah. I know I'm feeling sore. A little bit stiff. A little bit stiff. You can take the movement however you wish. So maybe moving through the shoulders, the head. Noticing which, which parts are tight. So yeah, I normally teach this at the start of every class. And most people do. Like, it's, yeah. just a, it's a good way to check in, but also just to start to open up the body. Especially like, you know, when we're doing public classes, we're always in the heat as well. Our studio is always in the heat. And so your body is kind of a bit more and a bit more supple and quicker. When you're doing these things at home in a colder room, the body's going to just take longer and not feel quite as flexible. So just be just be kind to yourself. And if it hurts or it doesn't feel right, back off. Yeah. Pull the body up a little bit better and then, you know, and then continue with where you're at. Okay. Right. Just feel the best. So we'll come to a huge spine. <laughs> I'll stop <laughs> with you. Tatsana. Stretching the arms forward. Lower the arm moves the chest down. So you can bring the chin forward or depending on the neck, this is too much on the chest and shoulders, you can take the arms a little wider. Or you can even bend the elbows out and roll the fingertips together so that it's more of a diamond shape. And you're just aiming to relax through the chest, through the shoulders. And so you can see, hands quite open. Over time, chest on the floor, throat on the floor, and you start to put the hands close together. Taking one more inhale across the other back. Exhale to drop the chest. And then just press into the forearms and slide the seat, seat back to the heels into a round child's pose even. So you can bring the knees a little closer, the arms by the side. 
And you might like to find some movement, so just rolling through the lower back, feeling a nice little massage across the forehead. Taking us slowly here, maybe one more breath. Feel is a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. Coming up to all fours. These are the parts you don't want to move out. They always feel good when you come out. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move, open up through the hips a little, drawing the right knee forward behind the right wrist. So depending on your bone structure, on how your knee feels, you might need the knee more central or if you want to add to the side. You might bring the toes a little back towards the left hip or over time, shin parallel to the mat. Sliding the left knee back behind you into your pigeon chair. So lowering the sit bones, sitting on a block or a bolster to prop up the right hip. And when you feel ready, you might keep the forearms, you might be able to lie all the way down. Or you can always stay upright and just work at this more to again. So, and then see the, you do another variation. The other version is figure four with the legs. So reclined, crossing one ankle above the knee. Then you might just stay here using the right hand to push the inner thigh open, or even reach through the gap in the legs, holding over the left chin or underneath the left thigh, so to draw your thigh close to your chest, self-adjusting with the right elbow. So just listen in to the knee in the shape. Just taking one more breath wherever you are. And then slowly pressing into the hands. You might just slide back to all fours or even tap the toes, take a three-leg dog, rolling out through the hip. Any movement that really feels good in the body. Coming back to down dog when you're ready. Dropping to all fours. And then we move to the other side. So sliding the left knee towards the back of the left wrist or it's more central. Left shin coming forward or the toes coming back. And then slide the right knee back. Propping up underneath the left hip. You might stay upright or start to walk the hands forward and lowering your chest. So you're feeling a stretch here in the blue and down the edge of the right leg. You might get, sorry, left leg. You might get some in the right hip flexor as well. Again, you can do a recline version if you wish. On the back, this time, left ankle just above the right knee, reaching the hands to the gap, or just pushing the left hand into the left thigh. Taking a couple more breaths here. One more breath. And then gently coming out of the shape. Again, you might come through all fours or a down facing dog. So the leg open like wide and take the circles. And then coming down, down my facing dog. All fours, kneeling. And we move on. <laughs> good student. Huh? Yeah. This is uh, very good. <laughs> so, and even now your body just starts to feel a little bit so like if you come straight into the wheel, straight into back bends, it's just going to be tighter. Even if when you move, when you want any parts of the body, the spine's going to start to loosen. Mm -hmm. You don't have to directly move the spine to do this way. So we'll come over onto our back and we'll just do some bridge lifts. So just loosening up the spine. So inhaling to lift the hips high. You can bring the arms overhead with you and just opening up the shoulders. And then exhaling, drawing the hips back down towards the ground, bringing the palms to frame your body. And just work with the breath, do five or six times. And each time, when we ground into the feet, lift the hips a little bit higher. Exhale, soften the body back down towards the earth. You can maybe bring the heels in a little closer as the body starts to open. Inhale, ground down into the heels, lifting the hips higher. Exhale and bring the hips back down. Do two more. After the second one, keep the hips raised. You can bring the arms back down by the side of the body. You can either frame the palms flat, interlace the hands underneath your body, or place the hands to your lower back, lifting your hips high, using the, the hands and the biceps just to create more opening in the front body. And then release the hands, lower the hips back down towards the mat, and maybe just rock the knees side to side, just create a little opening through the lower back. 
And so our next stage of um, moving into wheel, getting stronger in these um, these sort of in transitions. Transitions. <laughs> I have no words here whatsoever. Maybe I had Rachel when I was teaching public classes. Okay? Um, is to do almost wheel push-ups. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll teach you into wheel. And for you today, you might just be at the top of your head, or the hands might even just be by the side of the ears. If this is you, then you just really focus on pushing weight into the hands, even if you're not lifting anything away from the mat. Like we did on the other week, you can also place two blocks against the wall and place your head and use the blocks as just a little bit more leverage to get the body up into wheel. But we'll come into this position, we'll raise to the top of our head. If that's where you are, you stay there when you're ready to come out, chin to chest, throw the shoulders back down. If you want to come with us, we're going to do five wheel push ups. So then this is a really great way to open the shoulders, to gain strength in the arms, to gain strength in the posture. We're going to do one set, but Rach says that she recommends to do three right. sets of five. Or ten. Or <laughs> ten. I said ten. I know, yeah. she's making it up as we go. <laughs> These are also really good to do after you've finished your practice, because yeah. your body's nice and warm, so after you've done the online class, switch it off and then just come into your little wheel opening things because you want your body to be warm. Yeah, definitely. So, I'll pass you back over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it together. Great. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it together. together. Okay, so you can always do bridge again if you wish. If that's where you're at today, you're totally fine. So starting through bridge, arms either side of the hips, press into the feet, and then start to curl the hips, the belly, and the chest up. So staying here if you wish, sliding onto the shoulders a little. If you want to move into wheels, start to bring the hands underneath the shoulders. The hands can be a little wider if you have trouble pushing up or you have tight shoulders. Fingertips point back towards the heels. Try to bring the feet a little closer if you need to. And then you press into the hands and the first thing you do is come onto the top of your neck. So you're pressing the hands down so there's not too much weight on the neck. You're pressing into the feet. From there, you just stay here for a while, getting used to this, and then turn the chin, roll down. Oh. You can exit. Oh yeah. So we'll do another set. <laughs> this time pushing all the way up. Okay. <laughs> so so walk, walk the feet a little closer. <laughs> you can stay high on the toes as well. Yeah. That gives you space. That's how I started. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're feeling tight, I often start on my toes, it just gives me more space. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, so going straight into wheel this time. Hands a little wider if you need. Push into the feet, start to lift the hips. As you exhale, press into the hands, coming all the way up like Karen, or again coming to the top of the head, and then pressing the arms up. So to start, you might have bent elbows. Over time, you're starting to push the floor away, straight in the arms, and try to throw the chest through the armpits. From here, you might be able to walk the toes a little closer towards the fingertips. You might drop down to the head to do that. And then come back up again. Are we doing that? Are we going to, yeah. Well, we'll transition, these are the push ups. So pushing into the feet and the hands, take an inhale. As you exhale, you're trying to bring the crown of your head between your feet. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale up. That's two. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. The crown a little closer to the feet. Push it all the way up again. Tuck the chin. Back of the head down. Shoulders down. Oh, oh this time. Release the feet down. So you can take that even slower. You don't need to do. All of those transitions in one set. You can take a pause between each one. But you do have to. But you do have to do five push ups in a row. Or ten. Yeah. 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 And do yeah. three sets. You'll see yeah. that it works your body in a totally different way as well. It, can't, it ends up in the front of the thighs a lot more. If you have the arm strength, especially, you'll start to notice it here. Yeah. It burns. It does burn. It does burn. I mean, <laughs> so. Okay. And then we stop being able to speak quite as well as we demonstrate. So the, the last one that we're going to do, we'll, we'll talk you through forearms as well after this one. But the next one we'll do is um, one-legged wheel. 
Mm -hmm. So this is the full position. We start, and as Rachel sort of said before, you can just come into it and play around with walking your feet close together. I really like coming high up onto my toes, walking my feet in, and then dropping the heels back down. Because this creates a lot more opening in the body. And then you just can sort of keep edging forward, edging forward. You do maybe two or three sets. And then you walk your feet out a little bit to raise one leg at a time. You don't want the deepest expression of your wheel. Um, you, you might end up a little bit unstable. And I feel like you're going to fall. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of don't want to, yeah, you want to be open, but you want your feet to be slightly further apart than our stable base. Stable yeah. base. Again, I do it on my toes. Same. Doesn't really matter. You can drop the heel down, you can move the heel up. I find um, with the toes, I have more space in my lower back. Yeah, so it doesn't feel like I'm crunching. So everyone is different. Same. So we will do it with you. <laughs> Lucky. I know. <laughs>
We don't even know if we can do it today. No. So we'll let's just see how we got the joy of life. Do you want to join in? The joy of life. And there's no returns. Okay, so push up into your wheel. Just like that. <laughs> just like that. And then you start to walk your hands towards your feet, one four at a time. Keeping your head lifted if you can. And then maybe the right leg lifts all the way up. Right leg down. Left leg lifts all the way up. Left leg down, walk the feet in. Lift a little higher. Come back to the top of your head. Place the hands underneath your shoulders. Push back up through the middle. Ooh, chin to chest. Shoulders to the neck. Thank you.